Hello and welcome to Clinical Psychology. In this unit, we are going to be diving into psychological disorders and the treatment options that are available for them. This is a really important unit as we hope to understand some possible causes for these different disorders, the treatment options that are available, and how to better understand them so we can help ourselves and others in destigmatizing the topic of mental health and mental illness in our society. So I want to start today by talking about our objectives for this unit. Some of the topics that we'll be covering is hoping to understand how do we distinguish between what is considered normal and what is considered diagnosable behavior and thought processes. The topic of mental health is so important, but there is a difference between mental health and mental illness. We can all experience, and we all do experience, a wide range of feelings and emotions. It is entirely possible for every one of us to feel happy, sad, anxious, even depressed, without having a diagnosis for that. It's important for all of us to recognize how we're feeling so that we can address our own mental health. It's also important to understand when we cross over into the area of making a diagnosis for a clinical diagnosed psychological disorder. And how do we differentiate between normal emotional and health concerns to diagnosable disorders? And so that's something we will be exploring as well. It's really important to have these conversations to help with the destigmatization of psychological disorders in our society. The better we can understand how they come about, the different potential causes in our brain chemistry, in our cognitive processes, in our social factors that all play a role in why we experience these changes in our thinking and action, help us better to understand how we can treat them. And that is the ultimate goal of clinical psychology. Psychological disorders are very prevalent in our society. About 15% of the population suffers from at least one psychological disorder at some point in time. The most common disorders that we're gonna be talking about are anxiety disorders. We also see a lot of mood disorders in our society as well. Some of these can be temporary, and some of them are long lasting. Some might, may even last for the duration of a person's life. But it's important to consider that they are very common, that these are disorders that afflict individuals in our own lives on a regular basis so that we can help understand what causes them and how to support those who are suffering from them. There is no one size fits all treatment options for psychological disorders. Each is as unique as the individuals that experience them. And so what this unit will do is really give us a sort of template to work off of to better understand this for ourselves. The topic of psychological disorders goes back a very long time in our history. And there have been a myriad of explanations for why we see these changes in behavior in individuals over the course of time. For example, what we would know of today as being a psychological disorder might have once been explained as being some type of supernatural power, such as someone being a witch or being possessed by the devil. As time went on, people began to understand a little more about psychological disorders, enough to know that there were no supernatural explanations for why someone was afflicted with a disorder. However, the treatment option at the time was to simply remove them from society. In the 1800s, we saw an increase in the number of people who were being placed into asylums or even prison for having a psychological disorder because the understanding of what a disorder was and how to treat them was still largely unknown. By the time we reach the first half of the 20th century, we start to see a change. Instead of asylums, we start to see hospitals emerge to help treat those who have a diagnosed psychological disorder. Although the treatment options were still very limited, where the only biological intervention would have been something like a lobotomy. And psychotherapy would have been limited to a Freudian approach to understanding psychological disorders. By about the 50s and 60s is where we see the emergence of the first psychoactive drugs, which would eventually replace lobotomies in its entirety. Today, we have a wide variety of different treatment options that are available for these psychological disorders. So if we notice a change in a person's behavior or thought processes, 
How do we know it warrants a diagnosis? When does the way a person thinks or act deviate from what is normal? Because what exactly is normal? We're all different. We all have our own idiosyncrasies. So how do we know it's time for clinical psychology to step in to help in making a diagnosis for an individual? The language we might use when describing behavior that has deviated from what is considered normal, we could use disordered or even psychopathologies to describe the diagnosis of a psychological disorder. Psychologists don't really use the term insane or insanity, as that is more often used as a legal defense in court, but it doesn't really mean anything in the field of psychology when it comes to making a diagnosis for a psychological disorder. In order to label the behavior or thought process as a psychopathology or a diagnosable disorder, a shortcut psychologists might use is what is known as the four Ds. This is a shortcut that we might be able to use to be able to identify when a behavior or thought process has changed from what is considered normal, even though normal means a variety of things. The first thing we might look at is does the behavior or thought process deviate? Does it go against societal norms? Meaning is a person acting differently than the rest of society? That in and of itself might not be enough to warrant a diagnosis, but it might be a first indication that we've noticed a change in an individual. The second thing we might look for is whether or not it is distressful. If it is upsetting to themselves or other people that they're feeling this change in their thought process or experiencing a change in their behavior. The third is dysfunctional, meaning is the change in behavior or thought processes getting in the way of a person's day-to-day -day life. If a person can no longer do the things that they would typically do on a regular basis because a thought or behavior is interfering, then again, that might be an indication that something has changed and that might warrant a diagnosis. And the final one, of course, is dangerous. If a person is at risk of harming themselves or others, is a time to step in and potentially receive a diagnosis for a psychological disorder. So once we've established that a change has taken place, that a behavior or thought process has deviated from societal norms, that it is dysfunctional, distressing, or dangerous, how do we know which diagnosis to make? Psychologists use a manual known as the DSM-5, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders in the fifth edition. It's issued by the APA and is a complete list of all the psychological disorders, including descriptions to aid in making a diagnosis. This DSM-5 is about a thousand pages long and is a comprehensive list of the psychological disorders. We are not going to be talking about every single one of them in this unit, but highlighting some of the most common psychological disorders that we can study and talk about the treatment options that are available for them. As we get into this unit, it is really important to remember that our goal here is to better understand and to destigmatize the psychological disorders in our society. So that being said, please do not diagnose yourself or others in real life. It is highly insensitive to claim that someone has OCD or bipolar disorder or any other disorder based on a limited amount of information or understanding about these psychological disorders. That being said, if there are any thoughts or feelings that you are experiencing that are distressing to you in any way, please make sure that you consult a health professional as soon as possible. This is a really important unit to study and it's important that we take great care as we dive into the topic of psychological disorders. So next time we meet, we will start by looking at mood and anxiety disorders, and we will talk about the different symptoms and some possible treatment options that are available for them. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, remember, be kind to your mind.